All right, we're back with Jeremiah 20. Guys, we're going to get right into it. I stopped and got me something to drink and had to eat a little bowl of oatmeal because so I was hungry. So we're going to tear into this. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to do the last five verses of Jeremiah 19 and go to Jeremiah 20. And if you watched the uh, video yesterday, um, you should know exactly where we're at and what's going on here. Jeremiah has given the word. God said, okay, here's what I want you to do, Jeremiah. Jeremiah and he gave him a, a physical example to show him. Gave him the word, smashed the pot, and then said, okay, here's the deal. Jeremiah 19.11, uh, and, and say to them, thus says the Lord of hosts, even so I will break this people in the city as one breaks a potter's vessel. Jeremiah had just done that, which cannot be made whole again. And they shall bury them in Tophet till there is no place to bury. Thus I will do to this place, says the Lord, and to its inhabitants to make this city like Tophet. You know, it's like that around there. They had to bury it on top of the ground because all the underneath is already filled up with bodies. And the house, it costs you a million and a half dollars to get buried on the Mount of Olives. And they had to put your grave above ground. Verse 13, And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled like the place of Tophet, because of all the houses on whose roofs they have burned incense to all the host of heaven and poured out drink offerings to other gods. <laughs> Then Jeremiah came from Tophet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts. This is, this is going to be our segue into a really interesting exchange in chapter 20. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on this city and on all her towns all the doom that I have pronounced against it, because they have stiffened their necks that they might not hear my words. God's like, all right, y'all, here it is. He's given them every chance in, in the world. Now we're in Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah persecuted by Peshur. Now we're going to have an exchange between a couple people. Now all this stuff up till now, God has been like, all right, Jeremiah, tell them. Show them. Let them know what's, ha what's going on. Let them know what's going to happen. Jeremiah 20, verse 1. Now Peshur, the son of Immer, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Now, either he heard about it or he heard it. It says he heard that Jeremiah prophesied. Maybe he wasn't there. I don't know. Then Peshur, verse 2, struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. So they locked him up so people can make fun of him. The stocks are the, you hold your hands and your neck, lock you up. Jeremiah 20, verse 3. And it happened on the next day that Peshur brought Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then Jeremiah said to him, The Lord has not called your name, Peshur, but Magor Misabib. Verse 4. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and your eyes shall see it. I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, which he did, and he shall carry them captive to Babylon and slay them with the sword. Verse 5, Moreover, I will deliver all your wealth to this city, all its produce, and all its precious things. All the treasures of the kings of Judah I will give into the hand of their enemies, who will plunder them, seize them, and carry them to Babylon. Verse 6, And you, Peshur, and all who dwell in your house shall go into captivity. You shall go to Babylon, and there you shall die, and be buried there, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. He's a false prophet. He's, he's letting him have it. Now, it, things haven't even gotten bad yet. He's letting them have it. O oh Lord, verse 7, you induced me, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I, and I have and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. This is Jeremiah talking. He's Jeremiah is like literally being attacked by everybody who's his brethren in the city. Nobody likes him because he's telling the truth. That's the same thing happening today. Verse 8. For when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted, violence and plunder, because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Verse 9, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. This is very interesting, what's going on here. <clears throat> very interesting. That, what are, you, what are you doing, Angus? Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. What? Get out of here. Um, 
This is very interesting because a lot of people have proclaimed this. In fact, in the book of Proverbs, uh, I think Daniel makes the same uh, declaration. He says, I, I, I held it back, and when I didn't speak, my, my bones, it was Daniel or David, when I didn't speak, my bones dried up. When you hold in the word and you don't speak it, the, 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 it becomes so strong, it's overwhelming. I've told you guys before, if he gives me something to put in a video and I don't do it, I don't sleep. I can't sleep until I do the video. I went, uh, the, in 2019, I went four days, no sleep. Finally, I was like, okay, fine. I got up, I did the video, slept like a baby. It, it, you can't help it. It's so, there's so much contained within it. It's so powerful. It affects you. You can't help it. Verse 10, for I heard many mocking, fear on every side. Oh, wait, this is, this is good. Listen to this. Have we not heard this in our day? For I heard many mocking, fear on every side. Report, they say, and we will report it. All my acquaintances watched for my stumbling, saying, perhaps he can be induced. Then we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. Fearmonger. They're calling him a fearmonger. Have, have, I've been called that. How many of y'all have been called that you're just fearmongering? That's what they're, they're telling him there. They're calling him a fearmonger. Verse 11. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, awesome one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. And of course, we have his book today that tells about it and other writings. Verse 12. But, O Lord of hosts, you who test the righteous and see the mind and heart, let me see your vengeance on them, for I have pleaded my cause before you. Jeremiah's like, I'm finished. He's giving him the hand. Tell it to the hand, because the face ain't listening. He's like, Lord, go for it. Let them have it. I just want to see it happen, because I cannot believe what they're doing. Jeremiah is fully convinced to be on the Lord's side, and he's standing there. He's like, okay, I want to see what happens. Verse 13, sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the poor from the hand of the evildoers. Cursed be the day in which I was born. Let the day not be blessed in which my mother bore me. Jeremiah is so upset. He's like, I can't believe this. I should have never been born. Verse 15, let the man be cursed who brought news to my father, saying a male child has been born to you, making him very glad. He really, he's really upset. Verse 16, and let that man be like the cities which the Lord overthrew and did not relent. Let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noon, because he did not kill me from the womb, that my mother might have been my grave, and her womb always enlarged with me. He, he would rather he died in the womb. Verse 18, why did I come forth from the womb to see labor and sorrow, that my days should be consumed with shame? How many of us can relate to this? Why was I born? To, to suffer all this stuff at the hand of all these people? All these people that tell me they love me and care about me, yet they treat me like garbage? This is what Jeremiah is talking about. Look at, what, look at the position I'm in. Look at what I'm doing. I'm standing as the mouthpiece of our very God, and look what they're doing. Not only are they ignoring everything that's being said, but they're mocking at the same time. Not mocking me, mocking God, the one I'm delivering the message from. How can I stand this? I should have never been born that I should have to see my people called by God, mock God. How many of us can relate to that? I can. I think it's amazing because we have that happening today. People literally spitting in God's face. And it's, it becomes insulting. That to the point that you hear somebody do it, and it's like, why are you mocking God? What's the matter with you? That you want to stand up and say that you can't help it. That's part of being born again. That's part of being fully convinced. I'm choosing his side over everyone else's. Jeremiah has done this. They want to treat me like this? Okay, I'm taking God's side because he's the only one who's dealt right rightly with me. All these people, they can burn. But he's very, very depressed about this. He's like... It would have been better if I would never been born than I would have never had to see this day. Because this day is terrible to me. It hurts, it hurts his heart. And God knows. Verse 21, Jerusalem will fall to Nebuchadnezzar. Now we see God's wrath unfolding. Now it's really going to start going into, full, into high gear. Guys, that was Jeremiah 20. We're getting into some hard stuff. We're gonna hear, I mean, we're already we're hearing stuff that we can relate to. We're hearing stuff that seems to apply to now. I know a whole lot of y'all can, can relate to what Jeremiah is enduring and his proclamation that he's made here. 
tired of these people, tired of what they're doing to me, tired of being treated like this. And all I'm trying to do is the right thing. And I get treated more. And all they do, because I've chosen God, is the more they mistreat me, the closer to him I draw, the more I go to him. They're just, they're not driving me away from him. They're driving me to him. And they don't even realize it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.